Good morning. We welcome you to join us in worship as we believe God joined us in the worship gathering. This uh, service is a direct broadcast sanctuary of Trinity Lutheran Church, 534th Street Northwest in Fairwood, Minnesota. Our uh, pastor, Reverend Paul Rieger, will be conducting the service and delivering the sermon titled The Fruit of Our Faith. There will be a special uh, liturgy this morning, a gospel service with special music. The radio broadcast this Sunday is given in memory of Oscar Kuntz, founding member of the Trinity Radio Club by his nephew Chuck and Sandy Kuntz. Please join our congregation in our opening hymn, number 940 in the Lutheran Service book, verses 1 through 3 and verse 5. we begin with our invocation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's gather together for confession. God, who is gracious and merciful, we confess that we are sinful by nature and have turned away from abiding in your love. We have been tempted by our own desires and the world around us. Yet greater than all temptations is Jesus who dwells in us. For Jesus' sake, forgive our sins and bring us again to abide in your love. Dear friends, I have good news for you. God hears you. God loves you. God has sent his only son to you to redeem you and make you holy. And therefore, as a called and ordained servant of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, who sent Philip with good news about you to the Ethiopian eunuch, have mercy on us. O Christ, who are yourself the full manifestation of the love of God for all people, have mercy on us. O Lord, who tenderly invites us to abide in you as you promised to abide in us, Amen. Let's join together for the hymn of praise.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, you have promised to abide in us and keep us faithful to you and your work. Continue to bless our mission of bringing our church services to the people of Faribault and to the people all over the world. You have graciously blessed our church and this important ministry. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with in communion and love with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 8. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip, was, but Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Our epistle lesson today comes to us from 1 John chapter 4. John writes, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you heard was coming now and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent His only Son into the world 
so that we might live through Him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love is perfected in us. This too is the word of the Lord. Let's join together for the hymn for the gospel. And now I invite you to rise for the reading of our Holy Gospel in respect for the words of our Lord Jesus as we read the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. The branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated and I invite the children forward for our children's message.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, what do I got here? What'd you say? A branch. Is this just any old kind of branch, or is it a special kind of branch? It's special. What makes it special? Uh, berries, right? They kind of look like grapes, don't they? So this is what a vine kind of looks like. Of course, this is a fake vine. Oh, we got more friends joining us. We'll wait for you guys. All right, so this is what a vine looks like. I don't know if you were paying attention when I just read the gospel lesson, but Jesus says that he is the vine and we are the branches. So which part is the vine? If you had to guess, what do you think? Which part might be the vine? The, the middle part. Yeah, I think that, that's what the vine is too. Now, if my wife were here, she might tell me differently, but that's what we're going to go with for today. Now, so what part is the branch? Right, The part that kind of pokes off, that's got the leaves, the part that's got the fruit on it. So Jesus says that he is the vine and we're the branches. Can a branch do anything if it's not connected to the vine? No, it can't, right? What it needs the vine to, to have life. It needs the, the vine to have all the nutrients and, and to live. But it also, a branch bears fruit. What do you think Jesus is talking about when he says that we as branches bear fruit? I don't, I don't have like oranges coming off of me or anything like that. I, I don't see any apples poking off of Lydia or anything like that. So what are we talking about when we're saying bearing fruit? What do you think? Any guess? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, these are the fruit. That's good. Very good. But do you have the, these sticking off of your body? No, no, I don't either, thankfully. And so what does it mean when Jesus says we bear fruit? It's kind of hard, isn't it? Now, what Jesus is talking about are, are the good things that we do, right? So what's some good things that we do? Listening to mom and dad, picking up after ourselves, inviting people to church, loving people. Those are, those are good fruits. Those are good works that we do. So this is what Jesus is talking about. These wonderful things that we do are like the fruit. And we can't, have the, we can't do those things unless we're connected to Jesus, who's the vine. And so when Jesus says that he is the vine and we are the branches, we have to remember that we're connected to him and that because of him, we're able to do good things. And this, this branch sustains us and takes care of us. How is Jesus taking care of us? What does Jesus do to take care of us? He protects us. That's good. What does he protect us from? Satan? Sin? Right? That's why we have crosses everywhere. Because it reminds us what Jesus has done for us. That he protects us from sin. He saves us from sin. He forgives us all of our sin. And that gives us what we need to bear fruit. So let's pray about that, okay? Why don't you fold your hands, bow your heads, and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for him dying on the cross, Thank you for him dying on the cross. To, forgive us our sins. to forgive us our sins. We pray, Lord, we pray, Lord that you help us to stay connected to him so that we can do good in this world and share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, now don't step on my vine. Congregation will continue on with our next hymn. And if you guys will come up, I will give you a sucker.
And dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're now to the last weekend of our celebration of the radio club and, and everything that's, that's gone on for the past 70 years. And you know, in that first weekend, we had Pastor Utec from the district offices come and, and preach for us, and I just cannot get over what he shared with us. That original announcement from the founding group that ended with, above all, we want to glorify our Savior and be instrumental in the salvation of souls of our fellow men. And that's just, that's just so good. It's so spot on. It is exactly what our mission is. And honestly, that should be the mission statement of our church, and we should just plaster it everywhere, because that's exactly what we want. We want to join with our Lord in His mission. We want to take what has been given to us and share it with the world, because what did God do for us but give us perfection and eternal life? And if you could give that away as a free gift, why wouldn't you? And so I love this statement because it's just, it hits the mark perfectly. It seems like this, this motivation to, to give the love that God has shown us out to the world was, is just a part of who our God is. Our God is a God who gives and gives and gives, but our God is also a God of love. John really hits it in, his, in our reading from 1 John today. Quote, God is love. Love is from God. God and love are inseparable. So intimately connected, you can't think of it any other way. And John reminds us that God has shown His love into the world by giving us His Son. We remember John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. John reminds us again in our reading from 1 John today that this is how God shows love to the world, by giving His only Son. And what I think is really important for us to remember is that it's not some sort of impersonal saving, right? It, our Savior was intimately connected to our condition because Jesus, as He goes to the cross, He becomes our sin. He faces our judgment. He suffers our suffering and he does it all for love, because this is who our God is. Not only has he given his only son for us, but he has given us his life. But the problem is, is that there, it's not enough. We also need saving from our biggest consequence of our sins. We need saving from death. We need salvation from death. And so God in His love raises Jesus from the dead and gives us life eternal through that. That this perfection of resurrection, it's ours. And it's given freely to us. We don't have to earn it because God loves us. But the love of God doesn't stop there with the resurrection. Jesus ascends into heaven and sets up the church. He establishes a body of believers we know as the body of Christ, we still exist today as this body of believers, as this church who goes out into the world bringing God's love to everyone. The love that, that was expressed by these people in the early church and that we still express today is an expression of the love that God has given to us. Because we have been loved, we love. It comes into us and we push it right back out. And we see in the early church that they wanted to express God's love to the world. I think John says it just so well in our reading from today. This is verses uh, 7 through 11 if you want to follow along in your bulletin this morning. John says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because... God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world so that, he might, that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Raise your hand if you know what propitiation means. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, propitiation is, in essence, doing something to earn the favor, right? 
So uh, in payment for our sins, Jesus becomes our propitiation by taking our place, by paying the price for us. That is what it's talking about when it says propitiation. God is taking our place and making us right by that righteous act of going to the cross. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay, good. I'm seeing some nodding heads. And not the sleeping kind, which is good too. So then the question that we have to wrestle with now is, as John has been just nonstop talking about love, we have to think about what is love? What does this look like? And how do you do it? Because the problem is, is when you look out into the world, love has been ruined. Love is either something that's purely sexual or something that is completely trivial, right? I, I don't know how many of you ever watched the show Frasier when it was on. Um, it's on Netflix now, too. It's, it's just a funny show. But I remember this one episode where <coughs> Frasier is trying to get his dad to tell him that he loves him. And his dad says, well, I love, I love all these things. Like, I love beer, and I love the Seahawks, and I love the Mariners, and I love my dog. But he can't tell his son that he loves him. And that's the whole point of the episode. But it's so true, isn't it? I mean, that's how, that's how love is treated in this world. I love this pizza, you know? That's kind of how we, how we handle love, or we refer to things like intercourse as making love. Is that what love is? Is love so simple as those things? I think we can all honestly answer, no, it's not. Love is something so much more, so much further and greater than we can understand. And what we see is how God has loved us by giving His Son to us to save us from those things which would condemn us. That's what love looks like. And since we know this, since John has shared this with us, since we have seen this and read this in our face, we know what true love looks like. So then the question then is, how do we show that to the world? I think our reading from Acts is a really good example of how to show love in the world. Philip is led by the Spirit to share the, the truth of Scripture to a man who is genuinely curious. He hears this Ethiopian man reading Scripture. And so just so you're aware, in the ancient world, they, they did not typically read silently. They would always read out loud. So it's probably pretty obvious that this gentleman is reading from Scripture. Now this Ethiopian man is in a very high position in the, the queen's court of Ethiopia, but he comes up to Jerusalem to worship. So I think that it's pretty safe to assume that this is a Jewish man. And so this man goes up into Jerusalem to worship and he's leaving. He probably doesn't know about this whole Messiah guy. He probably has faith to know that God is going to bring the Messiah to our world, but he hasn't seen or heard about this Jesus. And so as he's reading Scripture, Philip is led by the Spirit to sit with him and talk with him about it. And what does he do? He starts with this piece of Scripture and leads it all to Jesus, pointing all to the love of God. And what happens? They come across some water, and the Ethiopian almost jumps up excited and says, look, there's water right there. What's preventing me from getting baptized right now? Of course, the, the answer is nothing. And so Philip and this Ethiopian man, they jump into the water and he is baptized. But you know what's amazing is that this Ethiopian man went back to his country and spread God's word to these people. He had been given love. He was sealed into that love in his baptism and now then went to his home country of Ethiopia and spread love, <clears throat> spread love to all those people there. This man is still the patron saint of this country. This whole country and their faith in Christianity was probably because of this one Ethiopian man. This is what it looks like when the love of God is spread. C.S. Lewis likes to call it a, a, a wonderful infection. That it, it spreads like a disease, that it just passes from person to person to person, and it just goes out into the entire world. And this is something that our church is also very good at doing, of sharing God's love with people, something we've been doing on the radio for 70 years, something we're going to continue doing on the radio probably for as long as this church exists, because we want people to know about the love of God. That love that we show is what we talk about when we talk about bearing fruit. 
It's from the vine of Jesus that we bear the fruit of love. As Jesus keeps repeating, I don't know if you notice it in the gospel lesson, but Jesus keeps repeating, apart from me, you can do nothing. I was visiting a man in prison on Friday, and we were just having this long conversation of all the times in our lives that we tried to be independent from God and take control, and all the times that that just caused us to fail. It is exactly what Jesus is hitting at here. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And that's the truth. Apart from Jesus, honestly, we are nothing. We need Him to sustain our lives, to give us that salvation, to keep us going, to keep us moving. And I bet that all of us are guilty in one way or another of being selfish and saying that we can do it on our own. Because that is the original sin, that we want to replace God and be the ones in charge. But the reality is that apart from Him, we can do nothing. But yet with Jesus, we have salvation. We have forgiveness. And so where there is the guilt of us wanting to be the masters of our own domain, there is also forgiveness. And as we know that, as we experience it, as we share it with the world, that sense of relief that we get from our guilt is also how we show love to the world. But you know, even I'm narrowing the love of God because it's so much more than that. The love of God that we have been given, that we proclaim in this church, which we proclaim on the radio, is far greater than we can ever imagine. Because one of the most important aspects of the love of God is where it calls us to go. God's love calls us to go to the fringes of society, to reach out to people who no one else wants to deal with. I'm reading a book which gave the statistic that uh, when talking about taxing churches, that if churches were taxed, Many churches would have to close their doors, and that would greatly hurt the charitable services of our nation. Because who's doing the charity work? Christians are. More, exponentially, more than anyone else in this nation, Christians are giving and loving and serving because we know the love of God is calling us to these people to care for them, to go out of our way to serve them. But you know, the love of God also calls us to go out of our way to be brothers and sisters to our own enemies. Those people who hate us, those people who would want to kill us. We are called to go out of our way to love them as our own family. The love of God calls us to love and serve those, even those who cannot leave their own homes. To love and give and, and take care of them. The love of God calls us to leave our comfort zone and be the presence of Christ in this world. And that's exactly what we have been doing on the radio for 70 years. If you think about it, 1948, these people got out of their comfort zone to learn all this new fancy equipment to broadcast their services on the radio. No one else was doing it. They went out of their comfort zone, out of their way to bring the love of God to the world. They gathered all the money together, they got all the people together, they got them trained, they got them ready to go. They all stepped out of their comfort zone, and we found that it turned into a very successful ministry, a ministry that God has blessed, because this is what He wants. He wants us proclaiming His Word. He wants us sharing His love with the world. He wants us to be constantly bringing it to people. And that's happened for 70 years, and it's going to continue to happen. And so what I want you to take away today is this example of the radio club and how they have brought the love of God to the world. So that moves us over to our gospel lesson. Jesus is the vine. I, as a believer, am a branch. The Holy Spirit works through me to produce fruit. And just focusing on this illustration, because I'm sure that there's more that a vine actually does. In this illustration that Jesus gives... What is a branch on a vine supposed to do? It's supposed to do one thing, bear fruit. If it doesn't bear fruit, what happens? It's cut off. It's cut off and thrown away. And so what are these fruits that we are supposed to bear? They're the fruits of good works. Now these works, as always, it's important for us to remember, they don't make us righteous, they don't make us better than anybody else. Rather, they're just a part of who we are. 
as we were talking about earlier with the book of Acts, it is a response of the love of God that they have been given that they're expressing to the world. It's the same way in, we, in, in us as we bear fruit, as Jesus in, is abiding in us, it is a natural expression for us to do good in this world. These good works, these good fruits are just who we are. We are Christians who do good work. And the radio club is just one expression of that. Now, what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to look at the radio club and think, well, they're, we're doing good. That even though I've never been a part of the radio club, that that is, my, that is my way of giving back. You're not allowed to do that. I'm sorry. You're called to also do things like that. But you might not have the same idea. You might not have... Um, you might not have the, the inspiration to join Jesus on his mission like the radio club has. You might not have this groundbreaking idea. You might, not, you might not have experiences like Philip had with that Ethiopian man. Your experiences might seem insignificant. But the reality is, is that they're not. And I point you to the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus is giving the, the parables of the lost and he says that there is more rejoicing over one person, one, one sinner who repents, than over 99 righteous people who do not need any repentance. God loves the lost. God wants the lost to come back home. And so the question is, how do you do this? How do you bring the love of God into the world? It might be through the radio club, but it might be somewhere else. Because this happens in your everyday life. In just existing as a Christian in this world, that's how you spread the love of God. It's just a part of who you are. That the Spirit is leading you today like the Spirit led, led Philip. As the Spirit was jabbing, po uh, jabbing and poking Philip in the side saying, go over there and talk to that guy. The Spirit's doing the same thing to, to you. Might be a jab and a poke, might be a whack upside the head, might be a gentle push. But the Spirit is pushing you to go out and share the love of God with the world. And so where, where is he calling you to go? It'll, to be, it'll be to those people who are already in your life. It could be your own family. It could be a stranger who's just living next door that you've never gone out and met. But this is where God is calling you to go, right here, right now, in this town. To go out, to give the love of God to people. And there's, there's two steps to this process. The first step is prayer. Prayer. You always begin with prayer. And I would give you the advice for what I use, and I say to God, God, we both know that sometimes I can be kind of a moron, and so I need you to really, really point out this stuff for me. Help me to see where you're calling me to serve. Because sometimes we're blind to it, or we're so caught up in the busyness of life that we, we forget to look. And the second step is to go. Just go. What is stopping you? What is stopping us from reaching out to these people? You don't have to make some grand gesture, but you have to step out of your comfort zone to actually love and serve these people, to be the presence of Christ in this world, because these people are hurting out there. And what we have in this community of Trinity can offer some great love and care to them. So let's go out and love the world as God is calling us to do, a world that is so badly hurt by sin. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's continue on by uh, declaring our faith publicly using the words of the Nicene Creed. You can find that on the back page of your hymnal. It'll also be printed on the screens. Let's rise and confess together. We confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let's join together in prayer, and let us pray together in Christ Jesus for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus Christ, you are greater than all and have been given the name above every name. Dear Lord, we pray that you would hear us as we bring our petitions to you. Firstly, Lord, we want to come before you as thankful people. Thankful for all of your blessings and all of the care that you have given us, the way that you have served us and loved us, namely in going to the cross for us, rising from the grave for us, ascending into heaven for us, and help us to remember that you're coming back for us. Help us to celebrate this victory that you have given, this perfection that you have given, and help us to share this love with the world, not only in our radio, but also in our own daily lives. But God, we come before you and thank you for what you have done through our radio club. Seventy years of spreading your word. We thank you for blessing this ministry. We pray, Lord, that you would help us as we seek to continue this ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up all of our loved ones, but we especially pray today for Harold, for Bob Applegren, Donna Babcock, Mandy Bloom, Irma Burkhartsmeyer, Wilmer Burmeister, Brian Cross, Austin Ellerbush, Kathy Gresseth, Linda Hesse, Craig Lures, John Maluski, Jenny Amor, Pastor Nerva, Vicar Reet, Diane Schultz, Nancy Schultz, Joanne Swichtenberg, Patty Stonehouse, Jim Velsky, and Earl Young, and all those names that we carry in our hearts that we pray before you now. We also pray for those who are in nursing homes. We pray for those who are in the military and their support personnel. We pray for the families of our congregation, Lord, praying that you'd help us to support them. We pray for those who are pregnant, those who are unborn, and those who are born, praying, Lord, that you'd help us to value and protect life at every stage. And we pray for our school, for the staff, the students, and family. Pray that you help us to continue to serve your community uh, with this wonderful mission. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for missionaries all over the world, praying that you bless them with your Holy Spirit, but we especially lift up Gary and Chris as they serve the Bolinao people in the Philippines. We thank you, Lord, for the technology upgrades that they've been able to have, that they're able to do their work better and faster. We pray that you would be with them in all of this, that uh, the things would work well. Uh, we pray uh, that you would be with them as they continue to uh, progress further on their translation work. We pray for healing for several of the team members who have been sick, and we pray specifically for Gary and Chris uh, Thanksgiving for their newest grandchild, James, who was born on the 16th. We pray that you would lead James to the waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. <clears throat> and finally, God, we pray for us. We pray for us here at Trinity. We pray that you would help us to be a cornerstone in this community. We pray that as we seek to add on to our building, that you would be with us in our planning, fundraising, and building. Help us to use this place to spread your kingdom. Do not let it become an idol or a stumbling block to us. But most of all, we pray for our Trinity family. We lift up, especially this week, Tim and Leah Abbas with Brandon and Cody, Kim and Dave Ahn, Josh Allman, Brian Anderson, and Bruce Anderson. Lord, in your mercy... Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. And now, Lord, we pray that you would hear us as we pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue our worship by bringing our gifts to the Lord. I also encourage you to fill out the little red friendship pads at the ends of your pews. And for the hymn for the offering, turn your radio on. The lyrics will be on the screens.
let's rise and join together in the service of the sacraments on page 6 of your worship folder. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially, we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. And therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. And now hear the words of our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's Table. You may be seated.
As we come to the close of another, of another service, we pray that it has been a blessing to you to strengthen your faith in Christ. This service is direct broadcast from the Sanctuary of Trinity Lutheran Church in Fairwell, Minnesota. The radio broadcast this Sunday was given in memory of Oscar Kuntz, founding member of the Trinity Radio Club, by his nephew Chuck and Sandy Kuntz. A pastor, the Reverend Paul Rieger, conducted the service and delivered the sermon entitled The Fruit of Our Faith. If you like a copy of today's sermon, please write to us at Trinity Radio Club, 530 Northwest 4th Street, Fairwell, Minnesota, 55021. Be sure to, please be sure to include your name, return address, to, and today's date. You can also visit us on the web at trinityradioandvideo.org where you can view past services, order copies of past services, and view a calendar of events at Trinity Church. We'd like to thank the following. In memory of Clay and Betty Cambick, a gift of $10 was given by Mr. and Mrs. Tom Schmidt. In memory of Cole R. McAdam, a gift of $5 was given by Verna Ball. In memory of Martin and Ruth Trench, $50 was given by their children, Eugene, Eugene Trench, Robert Trench, and LaVon Lennox. Until next Sunday at 8 a.m., we return you now to the downtown studios of KDHL. <laughs>